This is Dr. Dave Seftel reporting from Macular News. We have with Professor Patricia DeMore from Harvard Medical School. Patricia, tell us about the conference so far. Uh, so this is our third biennial um, conference on macular degeneration. Um, we put this meeting together because this meeting really is about understanding the pathogenesis, so how the disease um, develops. There's lots of meetings out there that are clinical, so lots of meetings for clinicians to go to and talk about treatment. This is more of a meeting to talk about how we think the disease arises and progresses, and we need to know that if we're going to have a better chance at preventing it and effective treatment. Tell us about your laboratory and the work that you're currently doing. So um, I'm actually trained as a cell biologist. Uh, historically, um, I was a vascular biologist. My early work was on VEGF. So I worked on um, the very early studies that showed that VEGF was involved in neovascular diseases of the eye, and that is now the tr treatment for wet AMD. So we did some of that really early work. Um, now I've become very interested in inflammation, and so my we don't really have a, a cure for wet AMD, but we at least have an effective treatment. What we're lacking now is any kind of a treatment for dry AMD or geographic atrophy. So my lab has turned direction somewhat, and we're interested in uh, the inflammatory process at the level of the pigment epithelium. Um, an area that I think you probably have heard about called inflammasomes, and we're specifically interested now in how lipids might trigger the inflammasome. So that's an area that we're working on. We're doing that both in tissue culture models and in animal models. So we're pretty excited about it. It's a change for me because, as I said, I'm a vascular biologist, but um, it's a it was a smooth transition. <laughs> and one of my postdocs is going to give a talk on that today, actually. So what are some of the most exciting areas that you're working on currently and going forward into the future? So, um, as I said, we're working on this inflammasome project now, which I'm very excited about. Um, I think it was interesting. Every time we have this meeting, there's a different, slightly different buzzword. The first time we had this meeting, people talked a lot about compliment. Then two years ago, we didn't hear that much about compliment. We heard a lot about lipids. Interestingly, we haven't heard that much about lipids yet this year, but we may this afternoon. But as a result of that last meeting, we became very interested in the possibility that lipids are the stimulus for the inflammation that um, underlies the pathogenesis of dry AMD. So um, you, I think Christine Curcio will talk a little bit today. She's done a ton of work in that area, and I'm inspired by her work. Her description of human tissue that shows lipid deposits and then some of the animal models really hold that up. So we're hoping to apply the animal models to our cell biology and really understand if lipids are capable of inducing that kind of inflammation. And obviously they might be potential therapeutic targets. What, what are the current thinking in that regard? Well, I mean, we already have um, uh, lipid-lowering agents. So the question there is, I don't really think much has been done to really push lipid-lowering agents to see if lipid-lowering agents, maybe a slightly higher dose, might actually do something in that regard. People haven't really done that much epidemiology even to look and see if people who are on lipid-lowering agents have less AMD. So there's a, I think there's some data out there to be mined, but we know we can modify lipids. We can, so I think if, if it turns out lipids are important, I think we'll be really in a good position to have an impact there on, on the disease process, not just us, but people who are out there in the cardiovascular field. They've been studying that for years, so we may be able to, to benefit from all their work. Thank you very much indeed. Would you like to add anything else additionally about the importance of uh, support for your program and also perhaps talk about some of the new tools that you're using in your laboratory? Well, I mean, in terms of support, Support for research in general, people probably know in this country at least, has been it's sort of at an all-time low f from our government for a variety of reasons. I think part of it is maybe some, some scientists, uh, we scientists don't do a good enough job talking about the importance of basic research. Unfortunately, also, I think our civilization, our culture tends to be a little 
thinking about things in the short term, whereas it takes a lot of basic research to get to a treatment. So the upshot is, though, I think we're, we have a crisis right now in funding um, for basic research. Foundations, you know, your foundation, other private foundations have been really filling in the gap and supporting people, so that's great. Um, but it's really, as you read in the literature, I mean, in the media, it's really never enough these days. To re Research is expensive. Um, new tools, I mean, all of the new genomics is really important. So ability to uh, take the information that people get from doing human genetic studies, and then we in the lab testing the validity of that or the relevance of that for the disease process, I think has also been a gold mine. We have a lot to learn there. So uh, there's a lot to be done, but if you, you, you see here at this meeting, there's a lot of passion and enthusiasm about attacking the question. So I think we're, we're going to make good progress. Ten years ago, we really had no treatment for wet AMD. So I'm thinking in much shorter time, we'll have something to uh, address dry AMD. And then maybe a little bit after that, we'll prevent the whole thing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor. We really appreciate your good work.